in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 till verse 3. And you made he alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you one walks in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience whom among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath just as others apostle paul in ephesians tells us we have four main enemies the enemy number one is the world he says we walked according to the course of this world the world is not nature mall and facebook the world is the evil system that exists within our world that tries to seduce us and bring us away from the lord the second one we see is the devil who happens to be the prince of the air the second one we see is the devil and the bible describes devil here as very interesting it describes him not as just a fallen angel it describes him not as a fallen archangel it says the devil is the prince of the air now we know God placed him under our feet being prince of the air we know that from the first book in the first verse in the bible that God created the heavens and the earth means there are heavens there's not one heaven there's multiple of heavens most likely you know the first heaven is the one that you see that we call heaven is just you know the air around our earth and then the second heaven is the spiritual realm and then the third heaven is where God lives and so Satan occupying the air indicates something right away about the demonic strategy is this is the devil will try to block your connection to God and God's connection to you Satan's strategic place is not in hell Satan's strategic place is in the air and he wants to block your prayers that's why many times when you come to prayer and you pray and you feel like you're praying to the roof you know why because Satan is the prince of the air and he wants to block your prayer and so and that's why Jesus gives us the power to throw him out of the air under our feet can somebody say amen and so we see the third thing here is the sons of disobedience as one of our enemies now I understand the sons of disobedience these are people who are not just living in life of disobedience once in a while they have perfected it to such a degree that it has become their identity they become sons of disobedience they're not just doing it once in a while they they're living their life and now we love all people even the sons of disobedience but you must understand this reason why it's our enemy is because it says in here and the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience if disobedience is just an act it's just an act if disobedience has become a habit there is a spirit that works behind sons of disobedience the same way there is a spirit that works behind the sons of God, there is a spirit that works behind the sons of disobedience. They're not just doing it on their own. And if you are here in this room today and maybe you find yourself in a category of the son of disobedience, I can tell you one thing about you. There's a lot of things you do you don't want to do. And you can't stop. Why? There is a spirit that works behind in the sons of disobedience at first it started with a cigarette it started with a bottle it started with a nightclub it started with one playboy magazine but after an act became a lifestyle a habit and the demons work in the sons of disobedience so that's a reminder to us who you surround yourself with because many times like the testimony we've heard you can be surrounded by sons and daughters of disobedience we love them but it's the demons that work behind them that will seek to attack you Adam didn't fall into sin because he was deceived Adam fell into sin because he hanged out with someone who was deceived which happened to be his wife when Satan couldn't confront Jesus in the wilderness he used Peter to try to get to Jesus Satan will always use those people close to you if they happen not to be sons of God but sons of disobedience to attack you. This doesn't mean that you have to disconnect yourself from them but maybe temporarily distance yourself. And people say but, but I have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost affects me. It's interesting when you put in a, in a, in a bundle or you put on a table uh, 20 good apples and one rotten apple. 20 apples will not make the rotten apple good apple. 
if you are just coming out of that lifestyle the best thing to do is to leave the rotten apple away from you and this idea that I'm going to win them to the Lord because they are deeper in sin than you are in God they'll win you over to the world once you get deeper in the Lord that they are in sin see they're committed to drinking you're not committed to prayer they don't miss a nightclub you miss night prayer they're deeper in sin than you are in Christ they will pull you over and quoting the scripture 300 miles per hour and having a bumper sticker is not going to save you there it's who's deeper in that situation and when you get deeper in the Lord then you have more influence that's why in the beginning your priority has to be to be linked in the home group to be linked in prayer and the word of God and to stay away because this could be a reason Satan will use to attack your life and number four is the lust it's our flesh one of the enemies that we have is our flesh it's not necessarily demonic it's just the, I always say the flesh is the devil's gift on your birthday and unfortunately all of us have unwrapped it and have been <laughs> tormented by it and you can't cast out the flesh you can't come to prayer line so we get rid of it uh, the only way you deal with the flesh is you crucify it and you submit your life to the Word of God amen I want to take a moment right now and deal with something that is this is the foundational message today concerning the spiritual warfare the Bible says don't give place to the devil and this speaks, speaks I'm sorry speaks to Christians that means Christians are capable of giving place to the devil last year around summer uh, we all had a service in the park and I had people that lived with us and one of the requirements that anyone who, anybody who lived with us I always asked them please lock the windows and not just close the windows but lock the windows because how many of you know you can close the window and not lock the window and so but because people have hard hearts sometimes they would not check double check you know and when it's not your house you, you you don't care as much as it's in your own house so sometimes I would even walk into the rooms and double check just in case and find out the windows to be open or doors left unlocked and we were all worshiping God in the park having a fabulous time and I come back to the house and I see in the house a wind at first I thought it was like the wind of the Holy Spirit you know so I was like whoo this is awesome I felt something different but I quickly realized the Holy Ghost isn't in this house yet and so I, I check one of the rooms and I find out the window is open wide open and I see fingerprints like a like a glove prints on the walls right away and the, the screen is removed and I quickly realized that our house got broken into one of the reasons I realized the house was broken into is because the car was missing <laughs> It's kind of duh. I look through my stuff and I see all of our drawers are open and for the first time I felt it almost feels like you're being violated when you just realize somebody went through your stuff. Nothing was taken except the car and the car happened not to be mine. So there was a sense of relief <laughs> and the car was supposed to be given to somebody and so if you can switch that's actually the guy that's the car that the person uh, took and so the person the, the ironic part is the 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 room that this person broke into this person who lived with us happened to drive around Pasco uh, downtown at midnight that's another ironic thing which one could go for another time and so and then this person finds out this car parked in downtown Pasco there with a note inside of the car and I want you to see the note I'm sorry for stealing <laughs> now unfortunately Satan is a thief he will you will never experience this with Satan that's what I'm going to tell you I brought it away but the person who stole in my house and broke into my house was studying me they knew they watched for nobody to be there and they got me figured out and it took me once or someone in my house once to make a mistake this person didn't attack me I've never seen him physically and I have never seen him before never seen him afterward he never stabbed me he never urged me the only thing he did he slipped into a window that was open took something and left it's interesting when Jesus talked about Satan he says one of the first characteristics of Satan is he comes to steal as a thief he remains anonymous as a thief his goal is not to stay but to steal see Satan comes to kill that's when the demonic oppression and demonic possession comes in but the first strategy of Satan if he cannot possess you and oppress you and torment you he wants to sneak in take stuff and leave that's why sometimes you will feel like something is missing in my life you know what's missing it's whatever Satan took 
how did he take it there was an open door I have about six windows and two doors and one garage door after that I realized I cannot rely on me or people living in my house to keep the windows and the doors locked so I, I invented this Russian reinforcer <laughs> I'm giving you tips today of how to secure your life the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost and wooden sticks from Lowe's what you do is you put this in so even if you forget to lock the window and close the window you stick them in so that nobody can open your window because they have this wooden piece I installed cameras in my house I bought fake stickers that say I have security in my house and those of you who are getting ideas I have cameras you can't break in and I started to I bought locks that the moment I get out of my house they self-lock in 30 seconds and so I, I reinforced why because I have valuables in our, my house and I don't want thieves to break in just last week 25 break-ins happened in one week in Kenwick if there's one thing you're gonna get out of coming to church today reinforce your house and your car the Bible gives us at least 10 different windows to your personal life and your soul and I want to mention them today not just to but maybe to if you're noticing something is missing in your life to maybe to double check is this part of my life open to demonic influence and if it's not to just reinforce one of the reasons we don't sin as Christians is not just so we stay away from jail and we don't go to hell and all this stuff the reason why we we don't sin as Christians is so Satan stays away from us if there is no heaven and hell if there is no eternity I would still not want to sin just because I don't want to have a thief in my house the same way I keep my windows and doors locked why because I want safe things in my house to be safe and so the first open door that many times is mentioned in the Bible and that is occult that is the biggest one horoscopes Ouija boards dream catchers talking to the dead uh, all kinds of uh, Ouija boards and connecting with the dead a levitation and and every shape and form of occult any teaching or a religion that does not believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord is an occult is an occult they might be good people but deceived number two the open door is disrespect for parents Bible clearly indicates contempt for your parents is open door for curse you can mark my word no one who dishonors their parents will have a blessed life you can have a PhD dishonoring your parents but not a blessing on your life there's a curse the Bible clearly states that you may say that's an Old Testament and everything it's all over the Bible where disrespect for your parents is an open door for the devil he might not oppress you and possess you but he will take stuff number three open door is injustice to weak and helpless it's when you hurt the needy or people who are weak I definitely believe if you commit abortion you open the door to the demonic God can forgive you but you need to renounce that and you need to find freedom and reinforce your life by never doing it again because it's a murder it's hurting someone who is weak and helpless and that is an open door for the demonic intrusion the next one is illicit unnatural sex or incest it's when people participate in sex that is not natural illicit and the bible mentions here things like you know sleeping with your mother or sleeping with your sister or sleeping the things that are just unnatural and things that are illicit and especially uh having uh physical relationships with animals the next one is anti-semitism if you notice that in your family or even in yourself you have you have this contempt or you have this hate toward the jews or disrespect for the jews i truly believe you really need to double check how you became a Christian because every author of this book is Jewish your savior is Jewish he was born to a Jewish people and so and he's coming back not to America New York Washington DC he's coming back to Jerusalem and the Bible says the whole history is going to be around that nation and so you might not be part of that nation you might not understand that nation but you have to have deep respect for that nation because that brings the blessing of God in your life can somebody say amen the next open door and that we need to reinforce is accursed things it's when you and I invite things into our house that have been dedicated to Satan and demons in the form of charms in the form of dream catchers in the form of things that have been Bible calls it abominable or cursed they've been dedicated to Satan and demons 
if you bring them especially objects that you pick up on your traveling or you pick up sometimes an Indian reservation and things that have been a curse they can bring sickness they can bring disease and they can bring nightmares and other attacks of Satan in your life sometimes actually there are accursed places places where somebody committed suicide or places where murder happened could become haunted demons they get locked in that place and anyone who moves in there they seek to torment for us as Christians it's very easy if you have a title deed for that place anointing oil anointing water any other that's anointed you come boom, 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 and you tell the devil you're not paying bills get out and that's it and you take authority over that and you live for the glory of God I remember when me and my wife we bought our second duplex and we moved in there and it was a drug house I checked the title make sure that they didn't have a lean toward the, the duplex and they said the lean is clean but the whole neighborhood knew this is where they did drugs I even know some people who got saved in the church who did drugs in my previous duplex so I knew it was a drug house and so we took a uh, spray we sprayed it with with uh, vinegar first then I sprayed it with anointing water vinegar for, was for the walls and anointing water was for the spirits and so we cleaned it up as we started to clean the house I found out that in the basement there was a hole and a dead cat was buried there and so I didn't I sent somebody else to take it out and so we took it out I remember I sprayed it and I knew that there was something unnatural about that so I took the anointing water sprayed it and, and anointing oil and everything and I just dedicated that house and everything unclean and I know God on purpose allowed us to find that cat to remove every cause of any because the last thing I wanted is sleep there and have nightmares and all kinds of demonic things that happen in my life it's my house we pay the bills and we're going to enjoy God's blessing but we have to remove the accursed things can somebody say amen the next thing that opens the door is stealing and perjury and your home group you will read the Zechariah chapter 5 verse 4 where God says person who steals will have a curse on their house and that the frame of their house is going to fall apart it's actually crazy how stealing perjury taking stuff that's not yours destroys your finances your retirement and everything that you have and it's an open door if you steal whether it's cyber stealing whether it's shoplifting whether it's just taking things from your boss that, that you don't uh, that you don't um, earn you must understand that is an open door for a demonic intrusion he might not possess you or torment you but he will take the opportunity to steal things from you and God doesn't want that to happen the next one is stinginess toward God we hear that verse all the time the next one is offense the Bible says the person who was had unforgiveness was delivered to torturers and tormentors and today in this message I just want to take a moment and pause on the last one murmuring if you have your Bible I'm going to read in Numbers chapter 21 verse 4 until verse 6 then they journey from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way and the people spoke against God and against Moses why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no food and there is no water and our soul loathes this worthless bread and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit people and many of the Israel people of Israel died I genuinely believe I'm not talking about occasional murmuring I'm talking about a murmuring that has become part of your character that opens the door to demonic write this down murmuring or complaining does to Satan what worship does to God God inhabits the praises of his people Satan inhabits the complaints of his people God seeks such that worship him in spirit and in truth Satan seeks that 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 complain to him and grumble and whine what worship does to God grumbling complaining whining does to Satan it's an open invitation for a snake bite you might not have a snake in you but it will you will have it bite you it's important to see this that murmuring and complaining is a character issue not a circumstance issue Israel had more miracles happen to them in the wilderness than many of us will ever ever experience in our life it's interesting none of the miracles ever fixed their complaining problem the problem wasn't with circumstances the problem was with character it took one thing not to show up on time and they go again whining and complaining and complaining and whining and I want you to remember today that your character 
is not made up because of your circumstances it's a byproduct of your choices to blame your character and your circumstances is to blame your mirror for your bad hair your mirror only reflects that you have a bad hair your mirror didn't make it like that your circumstances only reflect that you are a complaining person it didn't make you a complaining person and Israel complained, 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 complained and this was their character and yes they always blame the circumstances anytime people blame the circumstances anytime people throw a self-pity party anytime people live in this woe little me all of that is a character it's not your life situation problem and your character is a result of your choices your character is the result of your choices and the first change will happen how your character get changed if you stop excusing your attitude and blaming it on your circumstances your life might be tough your life might be rough but at the same time it is your character and that character opens the door for the demonic having a conversation with Bob Larson he told me something that really puzzled me he said Vlad two people can commit same sins even a cult they can be two people can be involved in a cult one person quickly just repents and everything is done with the other person he said will have a demon torment them for the rest of their life and I said well, what is the secret he says emotional and mental weakness he says I've dealt with over 30,000 demonic cases and I can tell you one thing if people grew up and inside of them there is that healthy emotional strength he says de demons are repelled by that he says you have to understand demons respect human will they respect human choice and they respect strong character that's why you see people who are ungodly many times who will not even have demons because there's a strong character that is full of positivity and it repels demonic serpents demons are attracted to complaining people and maybe you excuse yourself today and you say the reason I am negative, the reason why I complain, the reason I whine all the time is because my life is tough. I have a news flash, you won't like it what I'm going to say. But the reason why you're a complaining person, because you are a complaining person. That's all. This manna that God gave them, there was a miracle. You know what they said about it? Worthless. Why? Because when you're a complaining person, you look for things to complain. You, you could praise God for a man that it's angel's food. You say it's worthless. Why? Because a complaining person like a, like a magnet only gravitates and finds things to complain about. And unfortunately, not only you're hard to live with, not only you, it's hard to have you as a sibling, it's hard to have you as a spouse, it's hard to have you as a child, not only it's hard to have you as an employee or an employer, it's good to have you in the kingdom of darkness. Satan and demons, we see clearly, fiery serpents started to bite complaining people. You know what happened when they bit them? They became poisoned. Remember this, complaining tolerated is faith contaminated. The way these demons hurt you is they contaminate you inside. Where your faith is contaminated, you don't see beyond your present situation. You don't see beyond your sickness. You don't see beyond what somebody said. You literally, you're stuck. The time is ticking. You're stuck. Everything moves forward except you. And what those demons do, they infuse you with poison. They contaminate your faith. And when your faith is contaminated, you're disillusioned. You're disoriented. You're confused. Everything is dark. You can be in the same situation as other people, but you're lost. The only way to fix complaining the only way to fix complaining is to replace it with thanksgiving that's all there is no deliverance you can't be delivered from this you can only make a choice to be thankful bible says in thessalonians this in everything you have a job or you don't people like you or they don't you got laid off or you got promoted you're sick or you're healthy the doctor's report came positive or negative in everything see God knows what opens the door for the demonic and God is warning us and he is encouraging us he says not for everything but in everything you feel good or you don't feel good in everything give thanks for this is the will of God you want to know God's will for your life praise him in everything 
You want to know what God wants you to do in this season of your life? Thank Him. In everything. See, most of us say Thanksgiving is only for something. But God says Thanksgiving is in everything. You know what we're thankful for in Psalm, Psalm helps us to understand. In Psalm 100 verse 5 it says this, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. This scripture revolutionized my praise because like many of us in here I thank God because I have a house, mortgage paid for, my car didn't break down, beautiful wife, I have a ministry, my health is good, uh, gaining new followers every day on Instagram. Praise be to God. That's a very big praise report. Everybody seems to like me. I have a watch that I like. I have a phone that I like and I have everything nice and so that is what I'm thankful for to God. The problem with that kind of a thanksgiving, it takes my phone to fall from my hand on the ground and my thanksgiving went down with it. And God says in here what to thank Him for. One of the reasons we don't thank God is because we thank God majorly for wrong things. He says to thank Him for this, for the Lord is good. See we're thanking God because I am good. We thank God because my health is good. My finances is good. My relationship is good. But sometimes when it's not good God says still thank me because the Lord is good. I feel good. I don't feel good but God is still good. Can somebody say amen? And then he says this, His mercy is everlasting. That means my situation is not everlasting. My situation will not last. My sickness will not last. Even if I don't get healed, when I die, my sickness will die with me. My problem will not last. God's mercy is everlasting. And then he says, and his truth endures to all generation. That means nothing will endure in my life except God's truth. What God says about me will endure. That's why you have to praise. That's why you have to thank. If you don't develop a character of gratefulness and thankful to God, you develop a sour this face. The demons are... Mm -hmm. You come to church and demon says, ah, we got one today. We got one. They'll sit in church and we'll still hurt them. You can be on the worship team and have a bad heart. Character. You can be in a leadership team and have that character. It takes one small thing. One thing pastor said. One thing somebody did. Somebody said or somebody gossiped and that's it. And your face is sucked out. Somebody took a vacuum and took all of that stuff out. Because you're never really thankful to God because He is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generation. You are thankful to God because you have a job and because you have clothes and because people like you. And that is a wrong reason to thank God for. Your character must be avoid empty of complaining because that opens the money even if you like to complain you cannot take the chance because demons will come to you they will you will feel that in your soul spirit of heaviness spirit of fear and spirit of depression in the conclusion of this message i want you to read with me genesis i want you to see the other side right now not demons but i want you to see something about angels genesis 31 and verse 10 and it happened at the time when the flocks conceived I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream and behold the rams which leaped upon the flocks were how do you pronounce that word that's right that's like that speckled and gray spotted and the angel of God spoke to me in a dream saying Jacob and I said here I am he said lift your eyes now and see Jacob is in a similar situation that Israel was in not only he was born second, it wasn't his fault. He got one birthright, he got the blessing. He is leaving his father's house, escaping for his life. He finally got a little breakthrough. He met the woman of his dream. He helped her out. He said something they probably he should have not said. He promised to work for her for seven years. Not a good idea. But nevertheless, he was in love. He worked for seven years. They seemed like a few days. On the first night, he sleeps with her, wakes up in the morning, finds out it's her sister. Talk about bad disappointment. You think you had a disappointment? Now that is a disappointment. The worst disappointment is he ended up being married to both of them. Life can't get worse than that. <laughs> Two sisters who were birthing children to compete for his attention. They didn't even want children. They just want his affection. And one is mad at the other one and they're fighting between themselves and this is how Jacob lives and then finally when this stuff gets sorted out he's about to catch a break and Laban his boss the employer tricks him dupes him 10 different times he can't take him to court he doesn't have a lawyer 
and he's stuck. Now if you've been that duped, lied to and deceived in your life, I'm pretty sure your head is going to be down. But Jacob in this scripture we see, Jacob said this, I lifted my eyes and I saw a dream. You know what I saw in the dream? He says, I saw in a dream the very sheep that Laban said will be mine. I saw that the best sheep, they were this kind of color. They were this kind of stripes. I saw a dream. Jacob, how could you see a dream when the only thing you've been seeing in your life is disappointment? See Laban took my years but not my focus. The devil can take things in your life but it's still your choice to keep your focus. You can lift your eyes and you can see a dream. It's interesting that the next verse it says the angel of the Lord came to Jacob and said Jacob lift your eyes and see the dream and that angel produced a miracle where Jacob received exactly what he saw and from that point on Jacob's life the scale tipped and his life started to change. I want to tell you something today every person in this room has a dream only few of us actually see it in front of us because you have to lift your eyes You've been lied to, duped, deceived, undermined. You've had this addiction you couldn't break. You feel you're unattractive. You may be ugly. You maybe don't have enough education. You were born on the side, on the wrong side of the family. You haven't met your biological parents. Whatever the situation is, you can murmur and complain and whine and snakes will bite you. Or you can in the midst of years of years and decades of failure, disappointment, you can lift your eyes and you say, devil, you can take anything you want to take in my life, but you won't take my focus. And you see the dream. Everybody has a dream but it's time to see the dream in your eyes. When you close your eyes what do you see? I remember when I was in, in Spokane last Friday and the moment we started to worship I closed my eyes and I see a line of wheelchairs and I see them getting up. I open my eyes and I close them again and literally that's an image that started to get imprinted of people getting up out of wheelchairs of rows. I don't see that happening right now but you can lift your eyes and see a new vision. A vision of people getting out of wheelchairs. For me people being saved by hundreds and thousands. For you it's paying off your debt. For you maybe it's being healthy. For you maybe it's getting married. You have to see a dream not just have it on your phone. And that attracts the angels of God. The angels of God come and say, Jacob, listen up. I'm going to help you because you have a dream. Angels don't help those who have a nightmare. Satan can send you a nightmare at night. Ship it back to him in the morning. And you raise your eyes and look and see a dream. Can somebody say amen? It's interesting because Jacob did not see what he wanted to not happen. Jacob saw what he wanted to happen. I found out this about faith. Faith is not what you don't want to happen in your life. Faith is what you do want to happen in your life. Anytime your faith is this, I just, I just hope he doesn't leave me. We just started today, I just hope he doesn't leave me. We just got married, I just hope he doesn't cheat on me. That's not faith. That's inviting demons. That's fear. That's reacting toward your fears. But when you begin to expect the best, the Bible says faith is substance of things hoped for, not things feared of. I just hope I don't get sick. That's not what God is talking about here. It's when you look and you say, I just hope I live 120 and thousands of people get healed through me. That is the faith God is looking for. Angels are attracted by dreams. Demons are drawn to complaining. What is your character like? You can change it today. Maybe you are a negative person. All of us are. But we can change it one thought at a time, one word at a time, one service at a time, one prayer at a time and have our faith be encouraged and have angels be drawn to our dreams and say, I will partner with you. When I close my eyes, I see Toyota Center being filled with people. When I close my eyes, I see a large warehouse where people from all around the world are coming and they're coming to be healed and they're coming to be saved and they're coming to be delivered.
when I close my eyes I see thousands of home groups of people mentoring other people when I close my eyes I see cancer healings being healed every single service and demons not being able to hide in people's lives when I close my eyes I see some of you married I see others of you owning a house owning a car and blessing people with the car and blessing people with the job today you're asking God for promotion tomorrow you'll be giving promotion when I close my eyes I see a dream If you can see it, you can seize it and angels will be attracted to it. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.